name is Tiasha Charles, and you are in Animation Station. We have my wonderful co-host, Joseph. Hi, how are you? How you been? Thank you, everyone, for tuning in with us, and uh, welcome to Animation Station. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> we have a wonderful episode today. I'm so excited. Yeah, uh, for this episode, we're just going to kind of talk about a little bit, you know, we've talked about some of our favorite things and shows in the past, but, you know, today we're going to talk about some of the things that happened last year and some of these new upcoming shows that are coming up, you know, and that are upcoming that will be airing soon that haven't aired yet. So, you know, we're gonna, overall, we're going to be talking about four shows in general, and we're just going to be talking about everything that we've been really excited for in the past year and this upcoming year, 2019, with it being a new year and all. Yep, yep, and I can't wait to express my wonderful years of cartoons. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and you know, with this being our second So Much episode, we want to thank everyone, you know, for coming back to us after our first pilot and everything else, and, you know, just hit likes and subscribe and just, you know, continue listening. Yes, thank you guys so much, and we hope you enjoy. Mm-hmm. All right. Let's start with you. What is the past our cartoons that you have been seeing, huh? I'm curious. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, with 2018, 2018 was a great year for anime. And there's a lot of great new shows, a lot of returning seasons. But uh, first, I want to talk about like a brand new show that's just started that came out. Uh, the show is called, you know, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime. Now, this was a really great show that I really liked a lot. You know, I kind of. After being introduced to the show, I kind of wanted to research a little bit more about it and even, you know, wanted to get my hands on some of the light novels and the mangas and everything because it just made me so interested on what is going to happen next with this show, which, you know, really happens with me. But um, to give a little bit of a feedback about it, it started in October, you know, this past year and it just ended, you know, in March. So, you know, kind of went over a little bit into 2018 and 2019. But. The thing about the show, it's it's very different from some of the other ones that we've been watching now. It does follow some cliches and some things, but um, in gist of it, it is a world transfer uh, anime, which with that kind, you know, you, you get this character who gets transferred to another world and, you know, everything's weird and different. Now, unlike most animes where the person gets either it's either like a video game where the person gets summoned by like some mage or something along those lines or they stumble across like a portal that transfers them to another world like stargate or something along those lines (laughs) uh as it says in the title the person is reincarnated which means you know they die you know in in one world and then waken up in another which has happened before in some animes you know where the characters dies and then they get sent to another new world but this person which is really interesting about this anime is that the character is relatively uh, old. The character starts off as like uh, 37, I believe. You know, he's in his 30s. And which is unlike most animes where the person's usually a kid in high school or something like that. So <laughs> that that's, you know, kind of li- what I liked most about the first episodes. Because I'm centering on this character who's not, you know, a teenager. And... You know, then obviously they pass away and then they wake up in this new world. And another thing that kind of redefines with these cliches is that usually this character gets incredibly overpowered for some reason. You know, (laughs) if it's like a video game character, they're already at like max level with crazy stats and, you know, and they're like super powerful or they get summoned and then they have like this special magic about them that makes them really strong and overpowered with the you know surrounding characters and things like that so what makes this person different is that they're slime you know like the blob or something along those lines (laughs) and they're relatively weak and they have to work themselves up from being like this weak monster to you know stronger you know they have to level up and they do that by, you know, killing things, you know. I mean, it's a little bit of a cliche because where this person gets reincarnated from, they, you know, are lucky where they end up in to where they they kind of get like this XP boost, <laughs> you know, like oh they're by their surrounded environment where they can get an XP boost where they, you know, can easily level up and things like that. But with them being a slime... 
the main character, main protagonist being a slime is that they're able to consume anything and everything. Like their body's like acid, you know, or like the blob where they can just consume any living organic creature that they find or even plants and, you know, minerals and things like that. And that, that thing is what kind of gives it power and it gives it energy. So wow. it's kind of cool that the main character starts low, but eventually they get to the point where they're like OP, you know, by the end and stuff like that. But it's only because they work up to it and, and it's by killing and relatively eating other and other monsters and other creatures that are stronger than it. And then this is something that's really cool about it is that, in this world, in this magic world, it's a fantasy world. So, you know, there's magic, there's other fantasy creatures, you know, things like that. But this is kind of where it kind of turns into similar like a video game. And some of the other typical animes is that all all characters have like skills and abilities, you know, uh, similar to like, I don't know, like Pokemon. Like we talked about in the first episode, how all these creatures have basic abilities and eventually they start learning more and more powerful attacks which is kind of similar in this world but when the main character you know which the character's name is uh rimuru that which is a really cool name i really like the sound of it when they like eat and digest other monsters they like ob- obtain those skills and abilities kind of like you know you get what you eat <laughs> in a right. way where, where they by consuming your enemy or your kill, more or less, you you obtain their strength and their skills and abilities. And it's really neat how the Reamer learns to use these skills and abilities to like defeat, you know, stronger monsters or stronger enemies uh, throughout the show. And it's really cool how they use his, his power. But uh, one of the great things about the show is the artwork. Because him being a slime, it's kind of funny. It takes me back to like my first classes in animation because he's a slime, but his his shape is an orb shape. So <laughs> so so he's bouncing everywhere or like shifting or rolling and doing all these things. And it reminds me of how you know you learn in your animation classes bouncing, like a bouncing ball animation. So you learn about all these fundamentals of animation with like squash and stretch and uh, following through and anticipation and just being able to move and give uh, you know sense of life and like characterization you know character and personality to you know this inanimate object of of an orb or of a ball and it's just so neat because Normally, like in anime, like I watch it for the fight scenes and then cool action. And, you know, really, I don't really like pay that much attention to like the animation principles that much. It's like, <laughs> just make it look cool and make it look neat, you know, entertain right. me, just entertain <laughs> me, you know, have a cool character design. And like, that's it, you know, like I really don't uh, put much effort into it. But with this, I think it's only because like I've done that, I've drawn. 2D animations with, you know, a ball or, or a bag or some or a piece of paper, you know, and it's like, you know, give it personality, make it seem, give it life. And trying to add personality to these simple things, it's very difficult. And, you know, to make it look cute and entertaining and seeing them how they do this with him just being a simple slime and orb shape. It's really cool and it's actually kind of funny because there's a lot of times where he tries to do like a hand gesture and like he does the he uses like the his body to like form a hand and he's like, Hey, good job. And he like oh, does like a thumbs cool. up. He does like a thumbs up or whatever. So they do all these things where he like uses his body to like make all these forms and shapes like you know, like a hand or like an arrow or you know, those little X's or the the those little hashtag marks when like a character gets like annoyed or angry and they <laughs> and they give him like those hashtag marks on their forehead. Like there's sometimes right. like he forms that on his face and everything to like give him to show that like either he's angry or sad or upset or when he's like really, really tired, he just kinda like turns into a puddle <laughs> like and completely flattens out to show that he's like exhausted and things like that. And so it's just really cool to sh- see how um how they give that personality with, you know, just a simple ball and everything else. But overall, it's completely funny. It's hilarious. 
uh, the character oh designs God. are really <laughs> great. And there's some really cool fight scenes in, in the show. So it's just overall greatly entertaining. And there is some, like, um, I guess, sex- sexual innuendos in the show. But overall... It's anime. Of course yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> of course. But it's nothing, like, extreme. Like, I would say, you know, that anyone could watch it. You know, teens... You know, you uh, young adults or anything like that. Like it's completely, you know, safe for children. I would say, or safe for work. I uh, let's you know, it's safe for work or something along those lines. But it's it's greatly entertaining. So, right. But I have one question though. Mm. If, if he can turn, if he can like turn into a hand or like you know, a question mark or anything like that, can he also turn into a person? Well, that's, uh, I mean, I don't want to give away too much, you know, I mean, for some of the people who have seen the show, like they know the answer to it and everything else. But, you know, for anyone who hasn't seen it yet, you know, is interested in watching it, you know, I want to give away too much of what he can do and what, uh, what kind of characters he gets along. But, you know, usually like in the the opening video, it kind of gives it away <laughs> if you ever watch oh, like, the okay. opening video or something like that. But, I always you know, hated that. I always hate yeah. that intro. It's like you literally just gave away the main plot and I hate that. <laughs> yeah. But, oh I mean, there's there's some things like um, that he's able to turn into, but, you know, it's through consuming uh, other other characters or monsters and things like that, But which is kind of neat because, you know, when you see some of these really strong enemies that he's fighting, it's like, oh, is he going to be able to absorb their power? Like, what what's going to happen? All this other stuff. So it's really cool. Wow. That does sound awesome. <laughs> mm-hmm. And what's really entertaining is just the character in general. Because um, even though they kind of become powerful over time, they kind of give, like, this sense of um, humility to the character. Because, like, um, they're just doing, you know, what they think is right or what's the great thing to do. And, like, all these other characters that kind of flock to him. It's because of, not because he's powerful. It's just kind of, um, like, who he is. Like, his, his his sense of, like, managing and just, like, taking care of, like, the his people or the people. And he's trying to, like, make a life for himself because he even has memories of his human life. Right. And so of like, his so old like life. Like it's like personality. It's like mm-hmm. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's a very, you know, relatable character because even though the character's flawed, you know, he's always trying to do like the right thing and you know, it just has the sense of humility with with uh his personality is really well developed, as well as some of the other uh uh side characters that eventually, you know, become part of the of his team, I guess, <laughs> you know, of his entourage. Right. <laughs> so, wow. But, but, this um, sounds amazing. Yeah, it's a really great show. I highly recommend it. But what about you? What was this? What was the the show that you've seen this past year that really stuck out to you above the rest? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I would have to say this is back in like 2017, 2018, kind of. Um, Legends of Kara. If you guys don't know, a uh, show back in the day called The Last Airbender. This is basically part two of um, of The Last Airbender named The Legends of Korra, where, mm. sadly, um, I'm going to give you guys a little bit. Um, Aang, of course, it's been like uh, either like 30 years have passed. Mm-hmm. And, of course, once the Avatar dies, sadly, a new Avatar has arisen. And the next Avatar is actually a waterbender. So mm-hmm. they start looking around of trying to find who is the avatar. They start looking around different water bending tribes and they find a little girl named Cora. And she goes, you know, to train um, with Aang's son, which by the way is even more awesome because it's like, oh my God, and we get to see Aang's family. Mm-hmm. But she starts training and then later on starts learning, you know, you know, different air bending, fire bending, earth, and of course, she already knows water. And later on, more adventures happen, and it's like the most amazing thing ever. And then, of course, mm-hmm. later on in the show, or later on, later on in the series, yes, you see your old friends Toph, Katara, Sokka, and mostly everybody, even Zuko. 
which mm-hmm. by the way, if you guys don't know, is now the prince or sorry, now the king of the Fire Nation. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so altogether, it's an amazing show. It has to do with a lot of fighting, a lot of karate, ninjutsu, if you guys are into that. It's also, yes, a lot of romantic you know tension and it's like yeah. kind of cute <laughs> yeah because like the big difference between Korra and Aang is that you know uh, she's you know Aang was a child he was like what What was he like 10 11 years 12. old he was 12. 12 yes he was like 12 years old and here Korra she's more like 18 17 18 years old at least exactly. in the first series and then she slowly grows up and then by the time the show ends she's like roughly you know, like 23, 24, you know, you know, she's a young adult, you know, by that time, by the time the show ends. So it's really neat where, you know, she has this romantic relationship with some of her other characters, you know, and that's always really cool to see because it's, I think that was some of the, the things about the big difference between like Korra and Aang is that Aang was more geared towards children because he was a child. And as for Korra, you know, there's a little bit more of a mature uh, right. audience appeal because she's going through those typical things that you know a uh, 18 year old or a young adult goes through like finding themselves and trying to like make their way in the world exactly not to mention you're also she's also around people who, who are basically old school we have ang son we also got toff which by the way if you guys know who toff is toff was a, a earthbender, a master earthbender, who was blind and who can use her uh, her bending to see. And then later on, as you guys don't know, Toph also knows how to do metal bending, where she can actually bend metal with her hands and feet. Yeah. Toph's daughter <laughs> is literally an officer, which, by the way, everybody of the old last airbender, of course, grew up, had kids, and so... Cora mm-hmm. is literally learning from these people and mm-hmm. learning different things and just trying to, you know, try to be more mature because, you know, she's a teenager. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But all together, it's like she's learning each and everything from different nations, fire, water, earth, everything, air, everything. And it's just amazing. And then, of course, you have my favorite animal, Appa. <laughs> Which yeah. you guys don't know, Appa is a flying bison with like what six legs. <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think they have like six legs. Yeah, which is like uh, the by because uh, that was something that was really cool about the Avatar is that like each nation has like their own like I want to say like spirit animal, but there's like a animal that's native to their specific region that's right. able to do their certain things like. You know, you have, like, the water creatures, and then you have, like, the dragons, which is, like, the fire nation, and the air bisons, which can fly. And and then for the earth nation, they have, like, the underground, like, badgers, which is what Toph learned from these badgers that were blind, but also they were able to earthbend. So it's really cool that in this world, there's, it's not just humans, but, in fact, animals are the ones that have this power and this gift that's that the humans actually learn from in a way. So that's always kind of something I really enjoyed from those shows. It's amazing. I mm-hmm. love this show so much. And there's so much fighting in The Legend of Korra. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. There's fighting in, you know, in The Last Airbender. But this is mm-hmm. the thing. With Korra, it's actually more fighting and a little bit of blood, too. I didn't notice that before. Yeah, it's yeah, It's actually yeah. brutal. It's it's, I'll put it this way. The last Airbender was, yes, like a little bit childish because, you know, it, they were children mm-hmm. or teenagers. And then now Korra is like, it's, I mean, don't, don't get me wrong. They have some, their funny moments. But Jesus, it's like straight up punch you in the face, kick mm-hmm. you, destroy you. <laughs> assassins. Yeah. They had assassins. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Which I find it, I find it interesting that you chose uh, Korra, considering it is an anime style, and you're more for like the, you know the typical American uh, cartoons. <laughs> but you know because yeah, I mean it is like kind of like a hybrid. You know, for it being an American uh, series, you know it takes from a lot from that anime style with the the eyes and the features and things like yeah. that. But and also some of the facial expressions, but not completely. You know, it's a nice hybrid. 
of the two and that's what i think is really neat but yeah the fighting you know is really cool where they had like actual martial artists to kind of consult with like some of the fighting styles the way you know because you if you look at them and watch the show you can see how you know water bending earth air fire you know none of them are the same they all have like their different you know sorts of kung fu martial arts and things like that so they took took it from you know real world martial arts but there's there's a difference between them and stuff like that so it's just really cool how um how deep it really goes and you know they don't just make it up where they actually had a foundation of like real world uh, fighting styles to kind of you know exactly. illustrate from but you know what i cannot wait if they ever make another one i cannot mm. wait because um if you haven't noticed the last airbender they didn't have any electronics right yeah. But, we, but later on in Legend of Korra, you start seeing them actually having like cameras and movies and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And you already know that if they make another one, it's going to be freaking cars this time. <laughs> Dude, like, well, oh, they already had cars. Wait. Well, yeah, but I'm talking about like electronic, though. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, going to be nice. <laughs> yeah, well, it would really just depend. Well, because it would be like, you know, maybe another 70 years, you know, based on, you know, what. Um, the show and all that so it's like well how much could they really advance in 70 years but yeah yeah, I think it was mainly because the unification of the nation after Aang how you know it wasn't just benders you know the air benders are a small population so by bringing you know different people from different you know cultures they were able to like start like engineering and ingenuity and like technology you know into this world to help improve the everyday lives of normal everyday people because some of the main characters or you know maybe the side characters in, in Legends of Korra you know you see like a lot of these people who are just genius you know engineers and you know because they have like trains and a bunch of other you know like um, things from like the the steam engine days you know of of, <laughs> of our of our uh, country and things like that where. You know, they had coal and, you know, and all these other different types of technology. So I wouldn't be surprised if, like, they would start developing, like, better communications. Because they had, like, telephones sort of in in uh, Cora, but maybe they would have, like, cell phones or, you know, better radios than what we do now. Or maybe satellites or something like that. Wait, are you saying that the next, uh, the next last Avatar or Bender or whatever will be based on our time? Not not so much on our time, not like smartphones or anything did. like that. But not not so much like smartphones or anything like that, but just like maybe like I don't know, maybe like nineteenth century or something like that. I can't mm. can't really remember if they had like light bulbs in this one, but you know, this the trains, they had trains, they had uh, you know, telephones, radios and things like that, which is kinda like eighteenth century type technology that they had. So I think maybe in the next one, maybe it would be maybe a little bit later, maybe closer to 19th century. Because they had like a giant robot in the last one. That's true. So I don't know, maybe close. And I remember like some of the characters, like they're, you know, how the firebenders are able to use lightning. And that was like like a super prestigious and super hard, difficult thing for the characters to do in Aang's time. And then... They fast forward it to Legend of Korra, and like every single type of firebender is able to do lightning. Like it's just like, yeah, whatever. We all can do lightning, you know? Because like <laughs> I don't know, was there? It's like they mass produced like a pamphlet of how to do lightning for every firebender because they show these firebenders working in a factory, and they're using their lightning to power the factory. You know, yeah, they're like, using wasn't their it? lightning. They're using wasn't, their lightning to like harness electrical energy. Yeah, like so. wasn't wasn't like that move sacred or something? Like yeah, like it, and the then heck? like everyone can do it. So I think like maybe that was part of it when the, like the nations were unified again after Aang's ascension. Like they st- started sharing like all these powers, like like the water healing techniques. Like that was like mass produced because like anybody with water bending ability could you know do it and same thing with like earth bending where you know they mass train they you know toff she trained academy to teach people to earth bend i mean metal bend excuse me so like you know <laughs> i think that's part of it all where you know they started doing schools and they started teach mass teaching these 
advanced techniques to different vendors and stuff. Oh my god. This is so much in that one show. It's so yeah. much. Yeah. And I I don't know. Like the last airbender, or oh, which one do you like more? Do you like the last airbender with Aang, Katara, Sokka when they're like 12, 13 years old or 14? Or do you prefer Legends of Korra? Well, I do prefer Korra. I think it's I think Korra is is definitely appealing to a wider audience. Mm-hmm. Than than <laughs> Aang, I think most people who would, I think only like people who really like anime or really car- like cartoons, would appreciate Aang, and think it was mm. funny, entertaining, and cute. I don't think like I wouldn't introduce somebody to to uh, Aang. <laughs> I, I wouldn't introduce them to. I would introduce them to the Legend of Korra first because I do believe really I, I do I really do believe that it's a better sh- better it's better written there's better characters it's not as corny and as Z <laughs> as Aang series and plus it's longer like Legend of Korra it's much longer there's you know there's like four seasons you know and also you know it's just better fight scenes better action better story arcs better villains but, I believe but... and and then <laughs> with with the characters, they really don't play that huge of a role, like from Aang's uh, generation. Like, they play some role, but it's not, like, that big of a role. So, and then, but I, if they liked Legend of Korra, I would show them Aang afterwards. I'm like, okay, well, Aang came first, and this kind of gives, like, a prequel of, you know, of him. Because, yes, there is kind of, there's flashbacks yeah, in the Legend of Korra, <laughs> but, like, they're not, like... Like they're self-explanatory. Like you don't, like you don't need. They're not that critical to the story where it, it like teaches you like <gasps> need what? to explain anything. <laughs> I don't think so. Critical? I don't think they're that critical because okay, if you show someone a little like a little clip of the flashbacks of Toph talking about Aang or anybody or like their their kids or Aang's kids talking about their dad or anything has to do with that, they're gonna wonder who the heck is Aang. You gotta show them the first. But that's thing. only. But that's only. That's only if you show them the flashback. But, but if but you, also, they wa- if they watch the rest of the season, in the season, in the rest of the episodes, they kind of give you feedback. They give you, uh, you know, about everything that happened to them. You know, they give you exposition. And so that way, by the time you come to the flashback, you already know what they're talking about. You already know who the characters are. You already know who Aang is and everything else. You know, be- Joe, Joe, they're not going to know what an Avatar is. In the very but beginning they, of that- Last Airbender, they explain exactly what the Avatar is and how they he do, or she is linked. They you do can't that. Do they do that. that joke. They do it in the first episode. They do it in the first and second episode of Legend of Korra. They explain everything. Oh, yeah. They but they it's do a recap. Better. No, honestly, yes. well, I wouldn't introduce. I wouldn't introduce anyone. I, if I were to say what's better, I would say Legend Core is better. And if I was gonna introduce somebody to one of the two, it would be Korra. And if they liked it, I would say, all right, here's the last Airbender and everything else. And you know, it kind of it's like a prequel kind of thing. I would treat it as a prequel. Mm, I guess. <laughs> But okay, one more thing. Mm-hmm. But but what? Okay, so <laughs> obviously I think we know which one you're gonna go with. But which one do you think is better, or which ones do you prefer? The last Airbender. Yeah, okay. The last Airbender. The only reason why I say that. No, no, hold on. The reason why I say that is because I don't know. Maybe because I was a kid, um, back then watching it all the way up till Korra. I don't know. I just got so connected to the characters and it was so funny and fresh mm. and so corny to where everybody knows about it. Everybody loves it. Everybody made fan art about it. Everything, everybody made even like sent characters out to the production to see if they could actually make these type of characters. It's amazing. And that's how you even got Cora, Cora sorry, and to begin with. Mm. remember if you couldn't have that you couldn't have this <laughs> well i mean there's been a lot of diehard fans for after cora because i mean it aired you know the final season was what uh 2008 i believe or 
No, no, sorry. Two thousand. That was that was. But two thousand fourteen <laughs> was when you know it when it finally aired, and you know for the best you know over four almost five years now, there's been a lot of demand for it, and they just haven't really you know. No one's really started anything with it yet. You know, it's been a while mm-hmm. since since before <laughs> it ended, and there's been a ton of demand, and you know people want it. It was great reception. Uh, and th- everything, but nobody, I don't know, they, they just, there hasn't been no one who's been wanting to go through with it or anything like that. It's Nickelodeon, they're like, well, I, don't know. <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know what they're doing, but there's been a high demand even after Korra. Okay, okay, so. okay. <laughs> but, okay, tell me what is your pick for this year, or at least what's coming out? Yeah, so we're going to shift a little bit. We're going to, you know, talk a little bit about, you know, with it being a new year and everything, there's a lot of new stuff that's coming yes. our way. <laughs> you know, everything from new returning shows, from past seasons, so shows that are getting a new uh, season, or just shows in general that are new, that are coming out for, like, the first time, new seasons, new shows. But um, <laughs> I'm going to talk a little bit about something, you know, pretty much something that every anime person knows about and probably is more very excited for is hero academia season four no. <laughs> what was that <laughs> I, love, I love it oh my god hero academia yeah. i love it my favorite character sorry is bakugo when he's like yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah i mean yeah because it's just it's just something really good you know and which is really funny considering you know you're supposed to you're someone who says who favors more of the american stuff you oh know, no i but, love anime too it's just yeah. certain type <laughs> yeah no this this is something that has just been a huge hit lightning in a bottle and it is really great amazing stuff you know with you know the creators of the show and the the mangas and the you know, the light novels and everything is just really great stuff on how um, the show has been just been received, how it's been written. And it's just been a really great um, privilege to to witness, you know, Hero Academia and has come along and everything else. So, but I'm really excited for the new season. It starts in October and, you know, having like, they kind of sort of... Uh, kept me you know okay with like the new movie but there's talks of there being like a a second movie coming out you know i'm not exactly sure when no quote me on that but you know (laughs) the talks of a second movie and then you know the fourth season happening you know this upcoming october you know it's just really great fandom and just like so many people love it and yes there are you know the favorites among the characters, you know, with the protagonists, you know, <laughs> Zuku Midoriya and Bakugo and yeah. Uraka, you know, and then Ida as well, I would say, are probably like the top four, you know, favorites. And then, of course, All Might, you know, or Dad Might, as some people might know him as. Yes. Oh, my God. Yes. Oh, but do you think, do you think that one of these days we're going to find out or at least talk or are they even going to talk about Midoriya's father? Well, I mean, they kind of mentioned him briefly, like in the first, you know, season where his mom, you know, tells him like what his what his uh, quirk was, which in this um, world, this universe, you know, quirks are referred to as a superpower, which is I think is a funny name for it, which is something I never would have thought of. I never would have thought (laughs) to call it quirk, you know, because when I think of quirk, everyone thinks of like weird behaviors or their little things that people do that you know or find annoying or whatever like that so i just find that interesting that they call him a quirk but to any listeners that we have out there who don't know what my hero academia is which is i don't understand how (laughs) but if you're listening came across this show more likely (laughs) you would have seen or at least heard of my hero academia but to sum it up briefly it's pretty much about a world where humans have evolved to develop superpowers you know, similar to like X-Men. I always uh, tell people like if you like X-Men or, you know, know of X-Men, which most people should, or at least I hope our audience does, you know, <laughs> think of this world where, you know, humans start evolving and there's 
people just start developing superpowers and things like that. And everyone kind of has one, even though there's still people who don't. Not everyone gets one. And this is like sort of far off in the distant future where people who develop these superpowers eventually get this job title called heroes. And, you know, I would say they're licensed vigilantes. That's, I mean, because some of them, like, they don't work for the government in a way. They, they're kind of like private, you know, uh, I wouldn't say contractors, but they work for private companies and they become licensed vigilantes who, you know, get paid to go out and, you know, solve crimes or help with natural disasters or medical emergencies or anything along those lines. And in this world, there's this boy, you know, it it follows the, a teenage boy who wants to be a hero. And his name is Izuku Midoriya. And the thing about him is that he does not have a quirk until one day he does. And it's just about <laughs> his journey through high school, just trying to be a hero because he, he wants to attend this uh, UA, which is like the prestigious school in Japan. It takes place in Japan. And he wants to go to this school because he wants to be a hero. And, uh, and, you know, with that out of the way, you know, it being its fourth season, obviously, you know, he gets to train at this school and everything else. But it is just a really great show because one of the things that I love so much, besides the art style, because I find the art style hilarious with some of the faces that these characters have, <laughs> is more or less the development. You know, it is really well written and the arcs that these characters go through are just amazing. Um, not just the main character, but also the characters who kind of, I wouldn't say like his rival in a way, which is, you know, uh, Bakugo, who's kind of, like, <laughs> who's kind of a bully in, in the beginning, you know, because yes. he always <laughs> picks on, uh, I, I don't think he really hates Midoriya, I think he just finds him like irritating because of you know just who he wants to be and who he is and he just finds him just like annoying in a way I think because he just sees him as this person who will never be anything and he's just like why are you trying don't try we know you're not going to be anything you're not as good as all these other people or as good as you know me because you know because the thing about Bakugo is that I, th I don't really hate him or I don't blame him, but I do think he's the product of his environment <laughs> where he's one of these people who've been told he's great his whole life. Like oh, he's yeah. Like, I mean, look he's at like, his he's mom. Been told, I mean... He's been told that he's amazing and that, you know, he, he can do no wrong. He, like, he's just the best thing that's ever going to happen, you know, to this world, you know. He's born for greatness. <laughs> he's told all these things, and then his world gets rocked by, you know, Eventually, he meets people who are better than him, who are stronger than him, who have better a better quirk than him, you know, and all these other things. And, like, you see, like, how he kind of goes through this crisis of, you know, and, like, he doesn't know how to deal with that. And so you kind of pity the character a little bit, but then you see, like, how he, how he grows and evolves from this immature, entitled person to, like, this... Um, person who learns to appreciate other people you know who want to be the same thing as him and which is a great hero so <laughs> he got a reality check that's what happened <laughs> yeah yeah he gets this reality check and he kind of goes through this you know personal crisis but you know i think that's really he really goes through this arch in this development where he goes from like this brat to you know a, a little bit of humility and things like that and how to appreciate other people and their abilities and their quirks because what's so funny with him is that he comes up with these nicknames because he doesn't care to learn his other classmates names which is such a jerk <laughs> thing to do but he's it just is. like but he in his mind he's like oh you, he's like why am i going to bother to learn your name because you're not going to be around long enough because you don't have what it takes and just like you know he's really <laughs> full of himself but eventually you see how he turns starts to learn other people's names and all this other stuff so you see how he starts to um take interest in his classmates other than himself like like for example when um like he calls Raka round face <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and, and um after they fight like they're like wow like his classmates even said that wow um 
you could have been a little bit, you know, easy on her. And he's like, are you kidding me? She literally almost kicked my butt. What do you mean? Yeah. Like, what do you like, mean by yeah. sensitive? Like, <laughs> yeah, I believe the line is, is like, I wouldn't definitely call that girl frail. Right. You know? So like, which is like a compliment. Yeah. To her because <laughs> of the beating she took. And he doesn't, he says he's, she's not frail and everything else. And um, I think one of the, the biggest uh, things for me, uh, for Bakugo, but also you know, Izuku is when you know they they throw down with each other. They throw down with each other throughout the show, and you know they kind of have this rivalry. Talking about Dragon Ball, I see a lot of similarities between like Goku, Vegeta with Izuku Midoriya and Bakugo. Really? Like, like I see a <laughs> similar relationship. How it's a rivalry. You know yeah. what I mean? But, mm-hmm. like, they learn to respect each other. Like, they don't hate each other. And they learn, eventually, they grow to respect one another. Similar to Goku and Vegeta. But there's still, like, competition with each yeah. other. Like, they're rivals. They're not, they're frenemies, I guess. Well, not even frenemies, but they're rivals. <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're moving in. They're moving into that section. But yeah. um, mine would have been Sasuke and Naruto. <laughs> mm. Yeah, yeah, Well, I mean, Definitely. I've never, I've never, i uh, I probably would have said it, but like I haven't watched all of uh, Naruto and everything else. That's, that's, <gasps> all, that's, that's all my. How could you? <laughs> well, there's, there's, there's so many others. There's just so many others, but I'm really anxious to see uh, the relationship that uh, uh, Deku or Izuku Midoriya has with the big three. Yes. Which are three characters, which we see them like in the last few episodes of the third season which is like a title or i guess like a maybe it's like a designated title or if it's just a name that they were given from the from the from the school or like you know other students which are like the top three students in the school that in ua that um, midori attends to and it's like they're seniors pretty much and they're just like the three top students of the school so you have like the valedictorian and everything else and you see like them kind of like fight or have like this little sparring match. So I'm really anxious to see how uh, that relationship develops and more or less what they do, because maybe the, the it's going to shift a little bit from one character to the other where, you know, you kind of have Deku, but also you have this other main character who's like the Val Victorian of the school. And I'm really anxious to see what, his arc's going to be and what kind of things he's going to go into. And of course, you know, what sort of role All Might's going to play in this upcoming season. Oh my God, I can't wait for that. <laughs> but, but I, have, I have one question for you, though. Mm-hmm. Who do you think is the traitor? You know, I, you know it, it, I mean, there's a lot of guessing and there's a lot of theories out there and for i haven't really gotten that far in the manga or anything like that yet so i'm pretty sure some people know but um you know it, i think it's like probably somebody that we don't even know yet oh my god you know i think um, <laughs> probably it may i don't and i seriously doubt it's like one of the students you know it could be like one of the teachers or it could be just one of the staff members that we don't even know about yet <laughs> so you know it could be a lot of things but to be honest i'm not into entirely too giving it you know paying it that much attention for who it is i don't think it's like one of the like main characters or anything like that it's gonna be like a side character that very few people think uh care about oh my god <laughs> but um shifting for me a little bit what's uh something that you're excited about that's uh upcoming this year I'm they sorry, already... was that English? <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Invader Zim. Invader Zim, Invader Zim. If you guys don't remember Invader Zim, Invader Zim kind of came out in like, what was it, like 2006, 2005. But it's basically about this um, a little alien, this, this green little alien with like pinkish purple eyes named Zim. He's an Urkin. And um, his whole... Um, his people, his whole universe, his people, basically, they're kind of like collectors. Mm-hmm. They 
<laughs> take their invaders actually they literally go take a planet make them make it their own make whoever's on that planet their slave and so them he's kind of like a little dictator he's he kind of mm, he's, he's a big fan of being an invader but he kind of goes overboard mm-hmm. he accidentally um like for example he had an invader test and he kind of almost destroyed his own planet Mm-hmm. <laughs> so the tallest who are the leaders who are actually what they're called they're actually very tall because all the other little urchins like Zim are very short yeah. <laughs> um, don't like Zim by the way mm-hmm. so they give him a fake mission to destroy the earth and so they give him this, this little guy named Gur which by the way Gur is like a little supposed to be like a, a companion like a little fighting robot but it's yeah. weird because they Got him out of the trash can. <laughs> yeah. It's, He's it's so seriously, mal- seriously malfunctioning. Yes. He, like, Zim, I, like, the first episode, Zim was like, um, is he supposed to be stupid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so, basically, like, he goes down, he goes down to um, Earth, he, he sets out his, you know, his house to make it look human, and mm-hmm. got his so-called disguise, which doesn't really help, because he still has green skin. Um, and the same thing with Gur. Gur turns into like a little puppy puppet thing. And but he needs to be careful because destroying the Earth won't be easy because he's got this guy named Bib, who is completely into the alien thing. And of mm-hmm. course, he's like the weirdo of the school. Yeah. And his dad is like a famous scientist and stuff like that. But the thing is, he's going to stop Zim every single time. But deep mm-hmm. down, he's kind of hurting himself in the social department every time he does it because it makes him even more weirder because everyone <laughs> don't everyone everyone doesn't believe that zim is an alien don't get me wrong they think that zim is a weirdo too but not as much as dip mm-hmm. and his sister which by the way her name is gas does not help <laughs> yeah i find it hilarious how like their name or like you know like one syllable or like three letters or something yes. like that <laughs> Oh my gosh. It's an amazing show and I cannot wait for the new mm. one, which is a new new art style. Um same same voice actors, which is amazing. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be so sweet and I can't wait. <laughs> yeah, because it's been it's been you know, it was cancelled a long time ago. Yes. And you know, there's just Yeah, cause like I'm surprised it's coming back because, like, looking at its history and everything, you know, like, it was canceled and there was unaired shows. And they're like, oh, well, we already, like, it was canceled, like, in the middle of production. And they're like, well, we have these episodes already. So they just, like, released them on DVD for the general public because, like, the show was canceled, like, in the middle of a season. And they're like, well, we got all these episodes. So unfinished, unaired, you know, so we're just going to release it to the public and get a little bit of money. So... Right. <laughs> yeah. Which is, again, something that we talked about a little bit before how, you know, there's a lot of these, you know, revamped sh- old shows that are coming back that are, you know, getting like a either a reboot or a restart or they're like, hey, you know, let's bring these back, you know, because like they were a pretty big hit back in the day, <laughs> you know, 10, 15 years ago. Let's uh Let's continue the story because we always wanted to. Because I think that's something that's a little different now with the way things are. Is that streaming is popular, so so popular now that like airtime television, you know, with with uh, time slots and everything, is like slowly going out. Where we have things like Hulu and Netflix and all these other different streaming networks that like, hey, watch it on your own time, which allows like for there to be just be. A, hundreds of shows out there and not struggling for you know a time slot like oh my god (laughs) so i think with that like change of environment you know where people are able to bring back some of these old shows or even just have them run because like i'm seeing a lot of you know things like rugrats or some of those older you know 90s or early 2000 shows on like hulu or netflix or some sort of streaming network that you can just watch because they're not on television anymore. They're not aired. But it's very popular. That's why they have it. Yeah. But yeah. This, is the thing, this is the thing with Zim, though. 
they kept showing like little storyboards of what it will look like if they made a Zen movie or another mm-hmm. season of Zen. And mm-hmm. like at, <laughs> at, um, at, oh my God. I was, oh, I forgot the name of the um, little events that comes, Comic Con, sorry. Mm-hmm, yeah. <laughs> and they will show little storyboards of it. And it's like, okay, is that a hint that is coming back? And they'll always say, yeah, it's coming back. But they never say when, and it's even more yeah. frustrating. You see how long it's been. Yeah, it's been. Well, Jeez. I think they always say it's coming back because, like, well, they don't want to give a definite answer because then people are going to hold them to that answer, and people get mad. They're like, "Oh, we're rolling it back," or "Sorry," so like, you know, they can't give a definite answer when they say, "Yeah," you know, when they're like, "Oh, we are bringing it back." Well, it's like, "Well, we're we're discussing it. We're trying to get the funding. We're trying to, you know, get a get a plan together, you know, and things like that." So. Oh my god! I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then again, this is this is another Nickelodeon one. I'm seeing a trend here. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I, I don't know why a lot of Nickelodeon stuff is coming back. But I tell you, but also they're in competition with Cartoon Networkers. Cartoon Networks bringing their stuff back, which is not mm. working. But <laughs> yeah, but they're bringing their stuff back too. So who knows? Hopefully, mm. Disney Channel will do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, Disney. I think they're getting their own network now. You know, they're getting their own streaming network like Hulu and Netflix. So, I mean, I don't know if uh, Nickelodeon or if Cartoon Network have their own streaming service, you know, but maybe they will, you know, somewhere down the line, you know, if they get enough funding that they'll have their own, you know, uh, streaming network or something like that rather rather than just regular daytime cable or daytime television. Mm, yeah, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, just don't mess it up. Don't yeah. be like Cartoon Network and mess it up. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god! But overall, though, what would you say? Like, um, I've never really seen Zim, but you know, um, I, I recognize, <gasps> oh. I recognize, you know, the the character. Like, I've I've seen it before. I recognize it. I know of it, but I've never watched an episode of it. Mainly because it was, you know, so long ago uh, when it first came in. Um. What would you say is like the sort of um, audience, targeted audience for a show like this? Definitely, definitely our generation. Mm, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, because okay, the one thing about bringing a cartoon from back in the day is because, of course, you got diff. We'll see how long it's been. You got people <laughs> who are literally my age, <laughs> yeah. who, um, which by the way, twenty four. By the way. Yay, birthday just happened. (laughs) Um, Who literally, I mean, literally has been waiting for this cartoon for a while. Don't get me wrong. They're probably going to change it because Zim wasn't gory, but it was weird in a way. Kind of like a little gothic a little bit. But Mm. they're probably going to change some things. Maybe, maybe not. I saw the trailer. Um, So far, it still looks the same weird show that I loved back in the day. But they might change it because they want those kids um, uh, those kids na- uh, now to like it, yeah, maybe. But also, you know, they're tying, they're they're able to gonna be able to attract a newer generation as well to those people who, you know, if it's targeted towards kids, you know, then children are gonna see it and they're like, oh, this is a new show or something I've never seen before, and then they're gonna realize like, no, this is third season. This is you know, these first showed you know back in the early two thousands. So then they're gonna be like, oh, I want to go back and watch those now, you know, and everything else. So at this time, you know, yes, they're gonna get us back, and then probably <laughs> gonna want to watch the the newer one or the older ones. But then you know, a younger generation is gonna see it, and then they're gonna want to see previous seasons from before. So you know, it's this whole snowball effect where you know trying. They're attracting the old audience while drawing in the new one as well. So that's mm. true too. <laughs> yeah, I'm really curious to see uh, when it comes out and see what kind of reception it's gonna, it's gonna get. <laughs> I can't wait. Yeah. You need to watch it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you need to watch, uh, you know, the first one that I mentioned. You know, reincarnated slime because you haven't seen that one yet, and that's fair. No, I have not. So. Well, I I seen it a little bit. I've seen it because I know what you, you're talking about. Yeah. But I just never actually watched it. Watched. It. <laughs> <laughs> but I will. I will. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds actually cool. <laughs> yeah. 
it is pretty good. But uh, fortunately, that's all we have time for today. And uh, we would like to thank all our listeners and everyone who's tuned in for our second episode and really excited to get the third one on our way. And, you know, continue to, to like, comment, you know, give us some feedback and everything, ways that we can improve the show so we can bring more entertaining content to you guys. Yes, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been Animation. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> animation stations are still on about the Zoom thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you guys again. Bye. <laughs>